This episode of Soundscapes Rock is sponsored by BackingTrack.net. Kurt Cobain openly talked about how he ripped off the Pixies. He liked their style so much that he used it to create the ultimate pop song, Smells Like Teen Spirit. He wanted to write the perfect pop song, so he ripped right. off the Pixies. Right, yeah. Uh, that was nice. I read that then. So why did the Pixies resent Nirvana? And why was Kurt so intimidated by them? First time I, I, I heard the Pixies would have been around 19... 88, I found it just about the most compelling music outside of Sonic Youth in the entire 80s. Stay tuned as we answer these questions and more. But first, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and push the like button so we can beat the algorithm. David Bowie has described the Pixies as the psychotic Beatles, and rated their music as the most compelling of the entire 80s. And when they reformed in 2004, after breaking up a decade earlier, their return was treated with an almost religious adulation. The Pixies were formed in 1986 in Boston and consisted of Black Francis on vocals, rhythm guitar, and songwriting. Joey Santiago on lead guitar, Kim Deal on bass and vocals, and David Lovering on drums. What truly set them apart was their technique in song structure. They shift between soft and loud sections, heavy distortion, and feedback. This technique is called the loud, quiet, loud formula. Three elements I think made them important as a sound band. One was their pure dynamics, the very obvious now, but not obvious at the time, dynamic of keeping the verse uh, extremely quiet and then getting it erupting into a blaze of noise for the choruses. The Pixies has also the ability to seamlessly blend punk and surf rock elements into their music, along with their cryptic lyrics on shocking themes and topics. It was so irresistible to Kurt, and he used into his own sound. Nirvana ended up borrowing heavily from the Pixies' guitar sound and overall musical style that became a trademark of Nirvana's songwriting. So what do the Pixies think of Nirvana? Nirvana made the loud, quiet, loud approach famous, but the Pixies were using it before them, and their album Doolittle from 1989 showcases this technique brilliantly. When Kurt Cobain and Chris Novoselic first played Smells Like Teen Spirit, they felt it sounded a lot like the Pixies. They worried people would nail them for it. They were right, but it didn't matter because the song ended up changing the course of music forever. But what did the Pixies think about their style being taken? Well, the members of the Pixies, especially Black Francis and Joey Santiago, haven't let it slide. I'm appreciative of anyone liking my music, whether it's uh, Kurt Cobain or you. Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, uh, everyone likes music. And um, in terms of musicians influencing other musicians, that's the way that it works. Black Francis gets it. Every musician learns from the greats. Now you can too. Shred alongside your heroes with over 4,000 guitar backing tracks from the most famous bands across all genres. Practice and play like a pro at BackingTrack.net. Use code SSROCK for an exclusive offer. And get lifetime access to the entire catalog for only $9. Level up your playing. Head to BackingTrack.net now. While Black Francis, the leader of Pixies, seemed open to influencing Nirvana, Joey Santiago, his bandmate, held a different view. In a 2013 Reuters interview shortly after the Pixies had reunited, he was asked about his contribution to rock music. He took a dig at Nirvana, sarcastically saying, being original, influencing Nirvana so they could rip a song. He suggested that if Kurt Cobain admitted it, he would agree that Nirvana borrowed from the Pixies. He was also asked if he wishes they were more famous and richer. He replied that they're quite happy with their status and position in the music business. He pointed out that they consistently sell out wherever they perform as proof of their success.
But on April 2021, during an interview with Karan, his tone and attitude shifted. When asked about indie rock and grunge bands referencing their loud, quiet, loud style, Black Francis confessed they didn't invent that dynamic. He recalled hearing Sisters of Mercy at a discotheque, and there was a lot of dynamic in those big open verses with just a bass, a kick drum, and a snare. Then something bigger happened in another part of the song that lifted it. There's plenty of stuff that had dynamics like that, that the Pixies caught from other bands, and it's not really copying it. At this moment, he opened up about his true feelings about Nirvana's success. He felt torn between sounding arrogant or ungrateful. Over time, when repeatedly asked about Nirvana, he started to feel resentment. He felt like a Nirvana junior, wondering if he was just seen as a lesser version of Nirvana, or if his validation stemmed from someone else mentioning his name. He felt frustrated by the situation. Now, after hearing the Pixies' perspective on Nirvana and Kurt Cobain, here's something you might not know. Kurt was actually somewhat intimidated by the band. Francis mentioned that although he and Kurt were often in the same place, they never actually met because Kurt was quite shy. But the book Heavier Than Heaven tells a different story. Nirvana toured England to promote the Sliver single. While in London, Kurt attended a Pixies concert. The following day, he contacted Pixies manager Ken Goes and asked if he would manage Nirvana. Goes wasn't familiar with Kurt, but agreed to meet. When they met in a hotel lobby, Goes noticed that Kurt seemed more interested in discussing the Pixies rather than promoting his own group. He remembered Kurt sounding like a student eager to learn about the Pixies rather than just a fan. It was clear to him that Kurt had a tremendous amount of respect for the band and kept talking about them enthusiastically. During their conversation, an opportunity arose when Black Francis walked into the hotel. The manager offered to introduce Kurt to his idol, but Kurt froze at the suggestion. He responded, I don't think so, I can't, and backed away slightly. This gave the impression to the manager that Kurt felt unworthy to be in the presence of such talent. Additionally, there's a rumor that Kurt was extremely intimidated by Black Francis. At one point, Kurt suggested that Kim Deal should take more of a leading role in the Pixies, or that Black Francis should allow Kim to write more. So what are your thoughts on Kurt's opinion? Do you believe Kim would be a better frontrunner for the Pixies than Black Francis? Let us know in the comments below. Now let's circle back to the song that sparked all this drama between the Pixies and Nirvana. Teen Spirit is a dark, strange song. Its lyrics are tricky to interpret, and Kurt's singing style adds to the challenge of understanding the words. In a Rolling Stone interview, Kurt said they practiced for about three months. While waiting to sign with DGC, he and Dave Grohl lived in Olympia, while Chris lived in Tacoma. They drove to Tacoma every night to practice, aiming to write the perfect pop song. Kurt then smiled and confessed he was essentially trying to rip off the Pixies. The Rolling Stone then asked Kurt how he felt about seeing something he had written for fun, as a tribute to one of his favorite bands, become the grunge national anthem, and also a defining moment in youth marketing. Kurt explained that to him, Teen Spirit had a very cliched riff, similar to a Boston riff or Louie Louie. When he came up with the guitar part, Chris looked at him and said, this really sounds like the Pixies. People are really going to nail us for this. He also recalled the thrill of being able to leap onto the crowd with his guitar, getting pushed to the back of the room and then brought back unharmed. It was a celebration of something huge, but once it became mainstream, everything lost its magic and he felt embarrassed by it. From Cobain's view, we learned that drawing inspiration from music can teeter between imitation and innovation. His example shows that borrowing from another artist can result in something fresh and influential. And it's important to note that the Pixies' influence on the rock music scene extends far beyond just Nirvana. Notably, bands such as Smashing Pumpkins and Radiohead have cited the Pixies as a major influence on their music. The Smashing Pumpkins, known for their layered, powerful soundscapes, took cues from the Pixies' loud, quiet, loud dynamic, especially in Siamese Dream and Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. Yeah. 
Similarly, Radiohead, especially in their early albums like OK Computer and Kid A, also drew inspiration from this approach. Some might argue that it wasn't merely copying, but rather paying homage to a band that profoundly influenced Kurt's musical vision. However, others might view it as going too far because Kurt himself admitted to it. So where do we draw the line between imitation and inspiration?